I don't know, maybe some of you are going to get upset that we don't mention fewer shows and fewer production <laughs> and fewer people, but we did our best, you know, so we're going to talk about the early days at yeah. La Mama I and then about that. some important uh, productions after that. This is our last hope, yes, for the season. Oh, yeah, well. actually, I think it was a great season. We start with Sam Shepard, mm -hmm. with Charles Ladlow, Maria Rinfornez, uh, Mario Montez, Jean-Claude Van Italy, and Tomo Horgan. Mm -hmm. And this one we're working with for so long. Um, we do pass the hat in the intermission. You see, we have a band, we have people that perform, and everybody's doing it for free. And uh, even though we got a Tony, we can hardly uh, <laughs> we can hardly afford it anymore. Um, what? Tony sold paid rent. Actually, it's supposed to. <laughs> Maybe it will. Anyway, um, so that's it. So we're gonna pass the basket during the intermission, and uh, that's it. Let's start. Yeah. Hey. is right there that is now the Ninth Street Great Center. I rented both those basements. Oh, Hi! Hello! This is where it all began, you know. <laughs> and Tom always called me Suzla. He was the only person who ever called me Suzla. And I'm going to tell you how I met him. I was working for Joseph Papp. I was the assistant to the general manager of the New York Shakespeare Festival and Public Theater. And Tom was directing a show called The Conjurer. Um, it was written by Michael Saul and Eric Salzman. And on my lunch breaks, I would go downstairs and watch the rehearsals. And I'd never seen anyone direct who combined music, acting, and movement in the way that Tom did. And I was mesmerized. And my office was right outside of Joe's office. And anyone who came to see Joe had to sit with me for at least 15 minutes before they went in to have a meeting with him. And Tom and Eric and Michael would dance around my desk and pretend they were the Marx Brothers and disrupt my day. And um, I loved it. And after going to rehearsals for a couple of weeks, I got to know Tom. And I asked Joe and Tom if I could be um, Tom's assistant on the show he was going to do next at the Booth Theater, which was The Leaf People, which was an undertaking that was monumental. But Tom was always ready to do anything he was interested in, no matter what the outcome was going to be. And he made a beautiful show out of The Leaf People. It was gorgeous. Um, and so that was the beginning of our relationship. And I became part of the O'Horgan family. Um, and for the next 33 years, I worked with him uh, through the 70s, part of the 80s. I went back to school. And then for the last 10 years of Tom's life, I pretty much dropped what I was doing and I was able to work with him on all of his projects and shows. And we worked very closely together. I miss him terribly. He was really a man of peace and love. His politics were always right on. Um, he would be just, just disgraced by what's going on right now in our society. Um, and so I miss him dearly. He was like a father to me, and like a father to a lot of us. And now I'd like to introduce Paul Foster, um, playwright extraordinaire. Mm. 
writer of Tom Paine, and he was one of the founders of La Mama with Ellen Stewart, Paul Foster. someone who has got Crohn's uh, disease, it impedes your walking in her and speaking as nicely as you would like to, but I managed. Uh, I was going to talk about when I first met Alma Horkin. When I first met Alma Horkin, Ellen said, go find him. I hear so much about him. <laughs> I said, uh, you're not going to get me in any, any trouble if I do <laughs> She said, no, just bring him here. And we'll stay open a little later. At that time, the Lamarra was just being formed. There was she, she was with her 